Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. What's up? Um, We're here. We're back. <laughs> We're back. Again. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a different day, but a good day. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, we're back on Thursday, at least for the moment. Yeah. But it was really Thursday because it was like the first available opportunity that might or might not work out. Yeah, exactly. Because my work schedule is crazy right now. So, and why is that? Uh, I blame COVID. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody's blaming COVID. <laughs> it's the easiest thing to blame. I no, mean, it's, it's not. Just, well, the easiest thing to blame, obviously, is the government response to COVID. Ah, well. You got me there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy right now. So, um, I heard uh, recently they were talking about th- this isn't one of the topics we were planning to cover, but may as well hit it as long as we're here. Um, yeah. That uh, they had said somebody in you know one of these high government offices, I can't remember who now, um, had said that there's no evidence that the uh, the high unemployment benefits were affecting. Um, people's willingness to go back to work. Oh, man. I'd like to have a conversation with whoever that was because I disagree very much. <laughs> All right, man, they might be listening, so go for it. I'm just saying, man, nobody wants to work. Like, I have people come in all the time. They they can make more on... Granted, it's not a high-wage job, but even still, you make, if you can make more on unemployment than you can working, there's a problem. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just... There is... And um and that's the case right now. Mm-hmm. Like, Your brother's having the same problem. Oh, right? he's absolutely having it. It's worse. On, it's actually worse for him than it is for me. Yeah. I mean, I complain, but I've got a steady group of people that's worked for me for a long time, and and so I got a good core group. It's kind of the you know trying to fill some of the other gaps. But mm-hmm. my brother does not have that lucky situation. Like he is constantly trying to rebuild the bench and there's just, there's nobody out there to do it. Yeah. Well, last time I saw him, he was like, you want another job? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet he was like, he's, yeah. He, I think he asked everybody he encounters that he's like walking down the street. Hey, you need a job. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm a little overqualified for what you're hiring. Oh, still though, man, <laughs> it's, it's rough. And, and you know, it's, I, I hate to, I don't want people I want people to to survive and to be all right. And I hate to take unemployment benefits away from people who need them. Mm -hmm. But the problem is right now, and this is my understanding of it, is that people are making more off unemployment than they were actually working. And that may not be the case for everybody, but for a lot of people, that is the case. And I've talked to enough people that that is their situation, Mm -hmm. that they're 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 bringing in more now than they were when they were working. You're never going to get back to we're, we're going to have these type of issues staffing issues as long mm-hmm. as that's the case yeah what was it like 800 a week 600 i think is what they were saying well Maybe, i th- think that's what they've moved it to wasn't it, it yeah wasn't it 800 a week before i, I don't know anyway, I, I actually i mean i don't know the numbers because i don't like i said i don't know but i've just know i've had yeah. enough people that i've interviewed and talked to with that's i mean they're making more not working than they are if they worked yeah well um at Eight hundred a week. It's about three thousand a month. Yeah. Um. So that's thirty six thousand a year, and that is better than a lot of entry level jobs. Oh, it, it, without um, question. You so. know, um, six hundred a week is what twenty five hundred. So, um, you know, about twenty five hundred a month. Yeah. Um. So it's what right around. Uh, why can't I do my math? Um. Yeah, it's right around thirty thousand a year. Yeah. Uh, so still like better yeah. than a lot of entry level jobs. It's, and and the main thing is that you start, you start moving the bar, right? Yeah. So if I can get paid $30,000 a year to sit at home, why would I go to a $36,000 a year job? Yeah. I, I'm working 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year for another $6,000. What's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. Why do that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, especially if you can find a cash gig on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, like which, selling drugs or something? Something. Like, <laughs> I'm not making any suggestions out there, but I'm just saying, like, there's there's plenty of cash gigs out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, True. I, I don't know. But yeah, work's rough on me right now. So mm-hmm. All of that to say, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, um, moving to our topics, uh, I, I just kind of wanted to pick up where we left off last time. I, I've actually gotten positive comments about the last show, but um, I feel like 
left some stuff out there. Yeah, we, we didn't provide a lot of additional information. So we're going to move from um, something that's uh, right at the front of people's mind to something that's at the back of people's mind, um, but shouldn't be. <laughs> right. Something <laughs> the, the, we're like, trying to move far forward. Far more <laughs> dangerous. Um, yeah, I, I have definitely been on this uh, atomic scare thing. Not scare. That's probably a mischaracterization, but... Um, atomic just, awareness. Yeah, it's just a, it's a recognition that it's something that... that was a consideration, like a, a a strong consideration when I was younger, yeah, and has been completely forgotten, and yet is somehow more dangerous now. Oh yeah. Um. Well, and it just it seems like there's a lot of of I don't know what the right word is, but just people like people, particularly in positions of power, don't respect what could happen. Yeah, they don't the, respect the, conse- the, the consequences anymore. of some of these actions. Mm-hmm. It's like that that it's just that would never happen and Yeah. I mean that's just a dangerous game to play with something this catastrophic. Yeah. That's it. They they don't respect the possibility anymore. Yeah. They think because the the doctrine of mutually assured destruction yeah. mad, not a, <laughs> a crazy acronym. Um yeah. Never but, heard of that. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of mutually assured destruction, but I've never heard of MAD. <laughs> yeah, that's the acronym. That's the acronym for it, though. I had to do the math real quick. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's like that since this has worked for several decades, obviously it will work in perpetuity. Yeah. And, and but that's, I, that's, I don't agree with that assessment. Yeah. And, um, and it, at the least it's a dangerous game to play. Yeah. If you, if you figure that even a mistake... It, like even an error, uh, an overreaction, um, where somebody uses uh, atomic weapons in anger is greater than zero. Like yeah. is a greater than zero chance on a long enough timeline. It'll happen. It'll happen. Exactly. Right. Um, so I, I thought that I would just explain why the that panel of nuclear scientists keeps moving the the doomsday clock closer to midnight. Oh, yeah, you're familiar with I'm the, familiar yeah. with the club, but I hadn't I hadn't seen it lately. So I, I, I can't know. remember where it's at exactly. It's like a hundred seconds to midnight now or something like that. Oh, wow. Um so it, it's actually closer in their assessment, we're closer to uh nuclear holocaust than we were at the height of the Cold War. Wow. All right. Um and I think that that what we're about to cover is the reason why, because they yeah. are paying attention to this. Yeah, stuff, right. right. <laughs> yeah, they're not ignoring it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So uh, there, uh, and there's been a number of nuclear treaties over the years. Um. And I'm, I, like, I only want to hit on the, the big ones that are still relevant. Um. For some reason or another. Yeah. Um. And uh, while I think that it's relevant, um, I'm not going to talk about the JCPOA. We've talked about that plenty. The uh, Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. I do think that that's important and relevant, um, but it but we've persists. We've addressed it a lot. Yeah, yeah, and it persists even though we're not a part of it. Any like the U.S. is not a part of it anymore. Yeah. Um, although we're still trying to dictate terms, which is <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, so probably the the oldest and most important of the the relevant treaties now is the Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty, or it's actually the non proliferation of nuclear weapons i don't remember exactly but it's mostly known as the npt the nuclear non-proliferation treaty um and it has well like there's three uh important aspects of it i suppose the way they they break it down now anyway um they aren't express in the treaty but this is the big un treaty there's 191 countries signed on to it um like it encompasses just about everybody. And the most important point probably is the, of course the non-proliferation. Yeah. Um, and the requirement is that the, that, um, nuclear weapon States, um, which include China, Russia, France, UK, U S, um, and now include, uh, North Korea, Israel, Pakistan, India. Is that all? I think that's it. But none of the rest of those states are signed on in the treaty, by the way. Only oh, the, really? the, the five yeah. main ones are. Yeah, um, yeah Israel... So the, so the newcomers aren't on it? Yeah, well, Israel, India, and Pakistan never agreed to the to be signatories. Yeah. Uh, North Korea was one and then wow. um, left, yeah. Um, but anyway, the, the signatories that are nuclear weapon states 
um, agree to not give to or assist others that are not nuclear weapon states in the acquisition of nuclear weapons. Yeah. All right. So you can't give them weapons that they can arm and use yeah. and you can't help them create their own. Yeah. That's the enough. agreement. Yeah. All right. This technology is ours. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's <laughs> it. And now the, of course, those five countries that I mentioned are the five permanent members of the UN security council too. Oh, well, well right? that's yeah. Yeah. Coincidence there. Mm -hmm. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the second part of it is disarmament. So, but this, obviously this isn't working. No. Um, and it's not, I guess it's not really intended to. The, the agreement itself only urges those countries that have nuclear weapons in a vague way to negotiate with each other in good faith to try and come to a time where they can disarm completely. Yeah. Um, well, just don't really see that happen. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean kind of pie in the sky. Yeah, I I can see it happening in a in the long term. Yeah. Um, some changes are necessary. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the the last bit is uh, a recognition of the peaceful use of nuclear technology. So essentially, civilian power programs. Yeah. Right. Uh, medicine, power, yeah. et cetera, that kind yeah. of thing. Um. Now, of course, we're kind of ignoring that part, too, because that's that's Iran's nuclear program yeah. that we don't want them to have. Yeah. Um, there is a concern that, you know, um, the uh, technology to um, enrich uh, nuclear materials for civilian power is a close step, like essentially gives you a way to create a bomb very quickly. Yeah, It's not that quick. Um, and there's also the, uh, IA, EA inspections constantly. That's the International Atomic Energy Association. So if you have one agency? of these agency, so if you have one of these plants, they come in periodically to make sure you're not doing that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, that makes you know, sense. You agree to inspections as part of the, uh, of, as part of this plant. treaty. Yeah. As part of, well, yeah. and so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and this was established in, uh, 1970. Okay. Um, and it that that's why the the five primary signatories, the nuclear weapon states, those were the five countries that had developed nuclear weapons to that point. Yeah, okay. makes sense. And then um, Israel, India, Pakistan, North Korea, that was all after the fact. So Israel's a nuclear power. I guess I wasn't aware of that. Um, they will neither confirm nor deny. Okay, but it's but they're it's considered. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty well known that they yeah. have the capabilities that they okay. have n uh, nuclear warheads. Yeah, that they could deploy. Yeah. All right. Now, can we assume that those came from us, or do we think that they were developed outside uh, of us? I'm just um, going down the rabbit hole here, but I'm curious. I think that we can assume that they weren't purchased from us. Yeah. I don't know that we can assume that we didn't help them have a develop hand in development. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't know enough about that, honestly, okay. to say. But just just guessing based on our relationship with them, it would not surprise me to discover that that the U.S. helped them develop nu their own nuclear weapons technology. Yeah. And if nothing else, we definitely weren't stopping them the way we're trying to stop anyone else. No, no exactly. So that's absolutely. I mean, true. that's that alone is enough of a factor to get you there, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just completely ignore it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, like many things Israel does, but that's a whole. <laughs> that's a whole other podcast we <laughs> yeah. don't got to get into. I just exactly. Yeah, just the thought occurred to me <laughs> that uh, you know I didn't know Israel was a nuclear. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's generally accepted that they are. Okay. Uh, the, the next one would be the anti-ballistic missile treaty, the ABM treaty. Yeah. Um, this was a, uh, a treaty between the U S and the USSR. Uh, this okay. is a cold war treaty. Um, it was signed in 1972. Yeah. Um, and it was to limit missile defense. Okay. All right. Um, to, to two, so that each country could have two, missile defense arrays um, that were both limited to like a hundred anti-missile missiles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, like this seems like a weird one, right? But um, the, the concern was that a strong anti-missile defense system would encourage a first strike yeah. because 
if you felt like you could launch your missiles at the other side, and, and they, when they launched back, it wouldn't do nearly as much damage as you did to them, yeah. then it might encourage you to go ahead and, and launch. Yeah. That was the idea. I got So you. limit the defenses so that there's still the mutually assured destruction. Yeah, absolutely. Which is kind of a crazy way to approach a treaty <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, but yeah, it was what it's, was necessary. I mean, this is like, this is a... This is the height of the Cold War. This yeah. is um, how, the how end of effective Vietnam. was that stuff at the time? I mean, I don't know because I've always been kind of skeptical of those type of defense systems. Yeah, but. I think if there's good reason to remain skeptical of those kind of defense systems. Yeah. Um, I don't think the technology was there at the time, and I I don't really think the technology there is there now. now. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it wasn't much later that. Um, you know, it was less than a decade later that Reagan was talking about the Star Wars defense and all that stuff. Yeah. The strategic defense initiative. Hmm. Um, and, uh, now <laughs> here's the, here's the drawback to this kind of treaty though. Yeah. Um, like if you accept, well, I guess it, it the pro you have the same problem either way, honestly. Hmm. Um, whether you have missile defense, um, this agreement or not, um, as long as there's a knowledge of missile defense, it encourages an arms race. Yeah. Because you can overwhelm the defense with enough weapons. With enough, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which comes to the why we have so many yeah. potentially. I yeah. mean, one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah, there was a time where there was a tremendous number of nuclear weapons in both the U.S. and the Russian arsenal. Yeah. Um, it's down. We'll get to some of those yeah, in, a, in a moment. Yeah. But um, uh, actually, George W. Bush left this treaty in 2002. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is no longer an active treaty. So that's... Uh, it was initially um, replaced by the SORT treaty, which was the follow-up to the START treaty. We'll get to New START in a moment. Yeah. All right. And, and I'll hit that Because some again. of these have been brought up in recent yeah, history. Yeah. yeah. Um, then the, the next one is the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. Uh, this was also between now I, I should point out that these treaties between the U.S. and the USSR, um, the Russian republics, uh, like many of them signed on once the Soviet Union broke up. OK, um, so they didn't die with the USSR. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, this was again between the U.S. and the USSR, and it banned all land based ballistic and cruise missiles with a range of 500 to 5,500 kilometers, which is roughly like 300 to 3,500 miles. Okay. Um, it's about the width of the United States, right? In about three thousand miles, New York to LA. Maybe I have no clue. I mean, that seems so. that sounds about right, but I don't really know. Um, now, the purpose of this one uh, was to prevent. Uh, we'll we'll definitely use scare quotes here and say <laughs> accidents. Yeah. Um, that were uh, due to the short reaction time if these countries had land-based missiles that that could reach their targets in just a few minutes. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so it did not limit, uh, submarine based or, um, aircraft based weaponry, yeah. but presumably you were, you were on your own to try and pick those up beforehand, <laughs> right. like to know that the submarines were where they were and that the aircraft yeah. were where they were. But, um, the land based weapons, uh, were banned. I gotcha. Okay. Um, and, uh, Trump, withdrew from that in 2019. Okay. Yeah. So that's just that's the year. one I remember hearing about. That was, it was a big deal made about. Yeah. We talked about it a little bit on this podcast. We may too. have. Yeah. Um, I think we did. We should have, if we, we did, yeah. but I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah. Um, now the story goes that he, um, he withdrew because of a Russian violation of the treaty. Yeah. Um, there hasn't been any evidence of that presented as far as I know. Um, and any, what evidence there is would suggest that they, he wasn't threatening that Russia was not threatening Europe, but they, if they had land based intermediate range weapons, it was on their, um, Eastern border. So they were protecting or threatening China, not Europe. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. I, I actually, I think that it is more likely a, um, they more likely withdrew because of fears of China than because Russia was actually violating the treaty. Nah, um, because one of Trump's big things is he wants to incorporate China into these 
Agreements. some of these deals. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but that one was established in 1987, and this was a Reagan Gorbachev um, agreement. Yeah. Uh, and it was a big one at yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, Trump withdrew from it last year. So then the last one um, is the uh, the New Start Treaty. Now the the start um, is the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. Uh, the original one was um, went into effect in 1991, and it was the it was the predecessor. Um, well, okay. So then sort that replaced the ABM treaty was the predecessor to the new start treaty. The new start treaty is the one that's in effect right now. Uh, but essentially all these did, um, all these start treaties, there's been new start is the fourth one. So there's start one, two, three, and then new start. Okay. Um, it just reduces the number of deployed warheads that each country is allowed to have. Oh, okay. So right. it's like a, Moving towards reduction, then. Yes. Yeah. Um, the uh, the second one was only in effect for a little while um, before it was replaced, and the third one never even got signed. And the third yeah. one actually is the one that probably has one of the more interesting uh, clauses in it. It was meant yeah. to um, stop the uh, the MERV, um, w- which is the multi whatever reentry vehicle. Mul- it's oh. the uh, the warheads that split into multiple warheads. Oh, right? yeah. Um, and it was uh, it was, I think it was banning those the um, start yeah. three, but yeah. it never even got signed. Yeah, we got to have those. <laughs> I guess so. Um, yeah, we got to get past those missile defenses. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right? a few of these got to make it through, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, anyway, the the current the New Start Treaty um, reduces the number of deployed warheads in both countries' arsenals to roughly two thousand, like less than two thousand actually. Yeah. Um, it doesn't in any realistic way limit the number of total warheads, just the number of of deployed warheads. So their stockpile is kind of unlimited. Oh. And um, at this point, That's as we mentioned before, uh, both the U.S. and Russia have each somewhere between six and 7,000 um, nuclear still weapons. Still insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, that treaty is going to expire in February uh, if it is not. Now, they can just sign back onto it. Yeah. Like, they can extend it for another five years uh, with ease. Doesn't yeah. look like they're going to. Yeah. Um, it is well, probably actually going to expire in February. It wouldn't surprise me just with the tensions the way they are. Yeah. All the way around. How ridiculous is that, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, right. <laughs> now, the, the Trump administration is trying to replace it. Yeah. They're, they're not extending it because they want to replace it with a new treaty that um, covers more weapon types yeah. uh, and um, incorporates China like and brings Gets China them in. involved, yeah. yeah. Now, the chances of that being like some, this is a major overhaul, all right? Yeah. Um, and so the chances of, of the parties agreeing to that before February is almost nil, especially with an election coming up. Um, nobody has any particular incentive to sign any agreements with Trump Yeah, because they don't know because if he'll still be in he'll office. Be there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, also there's really no incentive for China to join one of these things. Yeah. Um, like I said, right now, the uh, limitation is that, that each of these countries has less than 2000 deployed warheads. China only has 300 nuclear weapons. <laughs> yeah, right? so. And in fact, I think it would be counterproductive to have China sign on because what, like, let's say you reduced it to a thousand, we'll cut them in half again. Yeah. All right. So now you can only have a thousand deployed warheads and the U S and Russia both cut a thousand warheads out of their deployment. And China says, Oh, we can build 700 more nuclear weapons. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we got to ramp up. We're <laughs> yeah, behind. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, they tend to not be wasteful, and 300 is more than enough to any, for any job that they would need done. But, yeah, still, you know, uh, the point is that, that it yeah. just seems silly to even, yeah. like, have that as a condition. Yeah, like, why why would they even need to be involved, right? Yeah. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, essentially, all of these Cold War era um, agreements have been dismantled. Yeah. Um, over the last many years, uh, the only thing that remains is the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty um, and start or new start until February. Yeah. 
and uh, and then there's really no restriction. Yeah. Well, and as far as that goes, there's still what kind? Of, I mean, there's still like Geneva Convention type restrictions as far as like active war and things like that, right? Um. Like, so if we were to like go to war with Russia, yeah. Like, is there anything like on paper saying that we shouldn't actually? Even though when it come when it when you come to a hot war, you're gonna do what you're gonna do. Like, yeah. I mean, you kind of deal with the repercussions after the war. Um, the the Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty is a UN treaty. Yeah. So I don't think that there's. I mean, you know, I would say technically yes. Yeah. I, obviously, you can't target cities without targeting civilians. Yeah. Um. But the argument that they made at the time of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, even though it was a very weak one, is that they, they were industrial centers. Yeah. Whose industry could be used for the war effort, well, essentially. I mean, you could, which makes any city anywhere, uh, if that's an acceptable excuse, it yeah. makes any city anywhere a well, reasonable target. And it, even with that, like you have Mobile, it's a big port, you mm-hmm. got... Pensacola, you got naval bases. Yep. Like, I mean, you want to start making those type of arguments. We got targets all over the place. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, I don't think that I don't think that there's any any real restriction. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's just scary. <laughs> yeah. And and it should be. I mean, um, and that and that's why I keep bringing this stuff up. Yeah. Uh, like, okay, if you're concerned about man-made climate change. Yeah. This is what'll do it. This yeah, right. <laughs> this is worse. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I mean I don't think that just general industry is going to be a disaster. You can agree with me or not on that. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that you'll all agree that a, a nuclear um war of no matter how limited yeah. will be a tremendous disaster to the environment. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least to the people in the area where the bomb goes off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, and far beyond, yeah. yeah, and far beyond, I mean, yeah. the, um, the amount of, uh, debris that's kicked up, mm. um, the, the fires, the, like, the fallout. it'll have a, yeah, it'll have so a tremendous how long does the active. fallout last? Um, well, it depends on weather and, yeah. and so forth. Um, uh, and I, I'm not a nuclear scientist here, so I, I yeah. even, I mean, I don't know that I have a, a base of knowledge to answer that in any <laughs> real way. <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, precise kind of way other than yeah. that. I, I, the weather patterns would, do have an impact, like, yeah. um, rain will bring it out yeah. uh, of the air, but if it's in a dry area and there's high winds, it can spread over a huge area. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, but the main thing is is just the amount of dust and debris that's that's kicked, that's kicked up kicked and smoke up. yeah um, that's kicked up into the air uh, that can affect large swaths of the globe and yeah. especially like I said even a limited nuclear nuclear war I mean how are we defining that we know that a limited nuclear war doesn't mean like one or two warheads going off yeah it's gonna at least be in the dozens well, right and something I didn't think of till just now but like what if you were in that situation where you're in a war with Russia or whatever, and they don't even use a nuclear warhead that way. What if they set off like an EMP or something mm-hmm. and completely like destroy all your communi- like power and communications and your grid and all of that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's certainly a problem. And now a nuclear, like a thermonuclear detonation causes an EMP. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. like, that's like, so they set that off like in the atmosphere or whatever mm-hmm. above the country and like, yeah. Deal with that, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's... Because that's always been my bigger fear, even more so than... Uh, um, see, that doesn't, that doesn't scare me nearly as much. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I not mean, nearly as much. I just, I see, like, <laughs> so, society, like, devolving really quick after yeah. something like that Well, I, I mean, okay, so humanity has survived a very long time without electricity. Yeah. Um, humanity has not survived very long without crops. Fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I think the EMP like is the least of our concerns. We can get mm-hmm. around it. Things can be repaired. It, yeah. Now, and I might be wrong about this, but my understanding is that uh, that uh, electromagnetic pulse um, only uh, only really severely affects electronics that have power running through them at the time. Well, really? um, I, I don't know the answer to that. You so. know, they, there's also a whole lot of uh, of ways to protect. 
um, against a EMP yeah, attack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, if you uh, know one's coming. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that they build a lot of this, a lot of really important stuff inside of Faraday cages at this point. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Interesting. Just something that kind of like I'm rabbit hole into that can be but, that can be your project for maybe I'll next, look into that for next, next week podcast. because because I've always been interested in EMPs anyway. It's yeah. always, it's always been kind of a fear of mine. I've all it's always been something that's in the back of my mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's certainly something worth considering. Um, yeah. But any kind of active use of nuclear weapons for any purpose, I think, is reason to be concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I want other people to be concerned, not like wallow in fear yeah but just but be just aware, be that, aware this that this is still a possibility yeah. it, it has not been lost that yeah. there has not been any kind of it, there's not been anything to restrict the use of nuclear weapons and in fact most of the restrictions have all went away over time have gone yeah yeah so um and again the u.s still does have a first use policy yeah that i didn't know till last week and that's crazy yeah <laughs> Um, so something a little lighter. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, I, I could do it. Actually, I could do a transition here. Back when I was a kid in school, we used to do duck and cover drills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, do I, those prove effective? Like how, how does that work? I, I realized as, I got, older, on this? I realized as I got older that, uh, hiding under my desk was not going to save me in a nuclear, um, in a nuclear detonation. But, uh, I mean, I guess it was something to do. Yeah, right. Yeah. It makes you feel better, right? <laughs> yeah. Or worse, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that that's part of it is like a little blankie, right? Mm. Um, it's just to to make you feel like... There's something you, you can do in this yeah, situation. Yeah, to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, they were already filling our heads. I mean, this is in the 80s. Like, yeah. they're already filling our heads with the possibility of nuclear holocaust at any moment. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so I guess they had to give us kids something to... To make us feel better. Well, and they got to tell the parents, you know. Well, we we had them do duck and cover yeah, drills. We're practicing. <laughs> yeah. We're practicing in case we're drilling. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We know what to do in this situation. <laughs> um, so now we're coming back into a new school year, and there are fights all over the place about whether kids should go back to school or not. Oh yes, that's that's very hot in my area. So yeah. we sent my kids back. My, both my kids went back to school. Yeah, we're, I, I was going to ask. We're we're senders. We we send our kids. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now one of the things that I have, um, maintained throughout this virus is that you don't want the consequences of the, the stay safe plan to be worse than, than not doing anything at all. Right. Um, and I I think that we're going to find over time that that's exactly what's happened. That the economic fallout, the the social fallout. In a lot of areas. Um, at that and just like the forcing everybody to wear these masks, Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know. I just see like a decade from now them coming out with these studies. It turns out when we were wearing these masks all this time, it's created X, Y, Z health problems in the long term. Yeah. Um, that's just like me guessing, but something tells me you're going to see these reports about a decade from now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, you know, we're, st- I still am comfortable referring back to Sweden. Yeah. Um, now Sweden didn't have any, um, government requirements. Yeah. There were suggestions, yeah. uh, and they put out suggestions. All right. It, it appears that you will be safer if you, um, maintain social distancing, uh, social distancing should slow the spread of the uh, of the virus yeah you know please maintain social distancing work from home if you can um avoid contact as much as possible um you know stagger shifts at work you know don't use public transportation unless you have to common sense stuff yeah um but none of it was mandatory right yeah none of it was yeah and uh while the rest of europe now of course in the beginning when it was spiking all over the place um, they were pointing to Sweden and comparing it to their um, their neighbors, uh, Norway and Finland, and saying, "Hey, look, you know, look how many more deaths they have." Now, I pointed out on this podcast that their infection rate wasn't much different, but they did have a higher death rate, like a significantly higher death rate. Yeah. But they still had a lower death rate than a lot of other um, a lot of other places in continental Europe and the UK. Yeah. Um, but now. With spikes happening all over Europe again, the the dreaded second wave. Second wave, yeah. Um, Sweden's just carrying along just fine. Yeah, <laughs> and they still haven't changed anything. Doing the same things they were doing in the first place. Yeah, right? and uh, 
So there was a, a, a big article that came out in Forbes, I don't know, a week or so ago um, from the health minister in Sweden who said that his prescription for the rest of the world uh, was go back to school, don't wear masks. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, he says social distancing, social distancing is important, but the masks aren't that big a deal. Yeah, and he's really like, you know, them. then you also run into all these questions about when is it appropriate to wear a mask, when not. He's yeah. like, you know, he said, th- this is one of the things you and I have talked about. He's like, oh, you know, there are places that are requiring you to wear masks when you enter a restaurant. You yeah. can't wear, you can't eat wearing a mask. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's the point of this? Um, so. But uh, they uh, kept their schools open. Yeah. And um, they didn't have uh, any kind of significantly higher infection rates yeah. um, for kids. Um, they had a few kids that had serious health problems. Uh, like, And I say a few, it was like 14. Yeah. Um, I think was the number. Wow. <laughs> um, and that's still more than you want, obviously. Well, obviously, like, but it, I mean, but, you don't want any in a perfect world, but we don't live in a perfect world. Right. So. Um, but they didn't destroy their economy and they kept children in social life, yeah. which I think which, is important. Which is kind of so... That it was a tough decision deciding what we were going to do with our two kids, mm-hmm. um, and that was really kind of what it came down to. Was particularly my oldest; it's her junior year of high school, and all I could think was like all the stuff I experienced my junior year of high school, mm-hmm. and I was like, I, I just I can't. And you wanted to put her in that? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, but I, a lot of who I am now kind of came from those times, you yeah. know. And I don't, I didn't want her to miss that, mm-hmm. and especially. I mean, they've been out since like March or something. I can't even remember, but it's been a while. Yeah. Um, and it's been so long, and all they've really done is sit at the house. I just, it felt like that's the right thing to do was to send them back. They need mm-hmm. that social. I, I'm, I'm just worried of what's going to happen to them if they didn't get that social experience. Yeah. Especially the older one, like I say, because, I mean, you can't like recreate your high school career, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean... I just, I felt like it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Well, and I understand the concern. I mean, there, there have been some studies that suggested that, and this is all they're talking about in our news is that, Mm. you know, children are super spreaders. Um, (laughs) The super spreaders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that they, you know, they may not get sick, but they're passing it all over to everybody else. And, uh, um, they're just so that people know, go look, there, there is far from a consensus on this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would, I there, would imagine there's far from a consensus. I mean, it sounds kind of out there to me. There are other studies that suggest that children don't actually spread the the virus into other sectors of the population. Yeah. Um. That. So anyway, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I'm. I yeah. just want to point out that the American media that's talking about this as if it's fact, it, it's not yet. It's it, far it, it from. It may be yeah. true, but it is not settled. Yeah. Um, and there is evidence to the contrary. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the main thing for me is that, uh, I think it, you're talking about the, the social interaction. Yeah. I, I think the, the, I think that the damage caused, um, from, a, we're social creatures. I yeah. think the damage caused from a lack of social interaction can be far greater than any damage that the virus causes. And yep. I was talking to, uh, my brother and his family were in town last week. Um, and I was talking to my sister-in-law about this. I said, you know, this is something that makes me kind of sad to think that like I'm out in public wearing a, wearing a mask. Um, and it bothers me that nobody can see me smile. Like there are places where that's a non-issue, yeah. you know, but down here in the South, like mm. we make eye contact with people, like complete strangers that we oh, pass yeah. and smile at them and say things to them, you yeah. know, just like general cordialities, hello and what have you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so nobody can see me smile when I pass them. Yeah. And I, I said, but more than that, like there's a bunch of children that, will never or well haven't for months and yeah. won't for the foreseeable future it seems yeah. ha- see anybody smile at them outside of their home yeah and you bring up a good point it's something i've c- considered myself as like the whole because now i just kind of walk around like i don't have to smile anymore i can make whatever kind of face at you i want to <laughs> I <still laughs> as long smile as it's, as long as it's under the mask <laughs> but but you're right though i naturally do exactly <laughs> what you're saying like yeah. Um, well, right now I, I smile at them and then I feel the mask when I smile and then I frown. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I hadn't really considered the part about the, particularly the younger children, mm-hmm. like what kind of effects this is going to have on them as far as yeah. just that type of thing. You yeah. know? I mean, my, my nephew is scared of people. 
Yeah. I, I, like he's been conditioned at this point to like yeah. anytime there's somebody else in the area, he's like, oh no, no, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and it kind of goes back to, so with my kids are older, but, but it does bring up a good point that, you know, these younger kids, you can't recreate these experiences for them in these, t- mm-hmm. and especially in these times, like you don't get another first grade. Mm-hmm. Like you don't, like, I mean, if you miss that, you just miss it. Yeah. Um, and what are going to be the long-term kind of effects of that and how mm-hmm. it's going to affect society as a whole. Yeah. I mean, there's some important rites of passage that are being missed. Yeah. Um, now, to shift gears a little bit, I am not a proponent of public schooling. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> well I, like I ran for board of education on the um, on the platform, essentially that we don't need this, but as long as we're doing this, <laughs> let's, let's at try least and do, do it, it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If we're gonna have this, we're gonna do it <laughs> yeah. right at least. Um, and uh, and I had no problem t- telling people when they asked me specifically what I thought the ideal situation was, and I said all private schooling. Yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> I, I think that we should dismantle this whole thing. But um, some interesting conversations <laughs> out of that. <laughs> yeah, there were a few. Um, then why are you running for this position? Yeah. yeah well, let me explain. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, I, that that being said, I do think that school is an important. Um, social outlet for people. This oh, is, absolutely. uh, this is a importance for relationship building and for learning how to interact with others. Um, and, uh, well, I don't think that the quality, I, I forgot to bring a glass of water in here and I'm really missing it now. Uh-oh. Um, well, I, I think that the quality of public education is pretty, pretty terrible, all things considered. Um, mostly because it's this, this kind of one size fits all education and yeah. one size doesn't fit all. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that while this is, I, I've heard the contrary as well. I'm hoping that this situation um, will uh, encourage a lot of people to homeschool. Yeah. And um, so while they were in town, though, my sister-in-law asked me what what I recommend to people in terms of education. Um, and she was talking about higher education, actually, like because I, yeah. I was saying that I didn't think that college was necessary for the most part. Um, but I, I started thinking a lot about, you know, what I think people should do with this. Yeah. Um, and so a a lot of people say, well, I I don't have the, the knowledge to teach my own kids, um, uh, the breadth of knowledge or whatever, by the way, I offer my services. Um, (laughs) there will be a charge for it. Yeah. That being said, um, and I, I understand that position. And, you know, if you're, if you got two full-time, um, working parents, then you don't have time for it. Like, yeah. I, I understand that there's a lot of problems that, that get in the way of you individually teaching your children. Yeah. But this is my recommendation for homeschooling that you crowdsource it essentially yeah. that you get you and other parents that you know, um, come together, yeah, and come together, kind of take a subject or something. Yeah. Take a subject if you can, or pull your money to hire somebody outside to come teach the kids. Yeah. Um, and you can do uh, group field trips and they get the social interaction. And so yeah. you, you get all of these experiences and probably a much better education. And it's one that can be personalized because you're talking about a small group. Yeah, I've actually seen some um, stuff online with different groups are trying to do exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, don't know how well it's worked or anything, but, but yeah. that that's a it's a neat idea and it's something that's mm-hmm. you know a lot of people. I think that's the way to go. Um, you know, maybe just a small community. Uh, it, yeah. Ideally, I think at this point it would be you know, a group of parents that you all know each other. Yeah. Um, your well, kids already hang out, you know, that kind of that, thing. And that's what you would want. You'd want it to be something like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe bring some different people in and yeah. whatnot. But, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, we still have the internet at least. I was like, going to say, can, you can put an ad on Craigslist. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably better ways to do that. Um, but uh, uh, Craigslist will be fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll discuss that business plan when we turn the podcast off. Yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> But, uh, but that's what I would recommend to people. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, just to follow up on the higher education thing, um, yeah. I, I don't think that college is necessary for most things. Uh, I think that if you um, try and get kids to focus on what they can do to generate a product or a service um, that people are willing to, to purchase yeah. um, with things that they like to do. 
yeah. that that's, you know, if you kind of instill an entrepreneurial approach that that helps a lot. Um, and, uh, when you, it gets to be time for college, don't go to college because it's the thing to do. If you have something specific that that's, you want to go to college for, that you need a college education for, then do it. If you have no idea what you want to do, don't go to college yet. Yeah. Because let me tell you, like the, the deal with the debt is insane. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's, and that's the reason I would say don't go to college just to go because then you're basically starting out behind yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Um, and I didn't go to college. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I took a few classes, but I realized very fast that this was mm -hmm. not the direction I needed to take myself yeah. and, um, and stepped away from it. And I just, and I, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I didn't like double down on, well, I've really got to do this mm -hmm. because I think I would have ended up with a bunch of debt and not a lot to show for it. Yeah. Well, uh, um, I did more college than I probably needed to. Yeah. Um, I didn't end up with debt luckily, but, yeah. uh, but you're, you're the exception to that. Like, I mean, and that there's, well, I don't know that my college has actually helped me. Out. It, it has helped me out in indirect ways, not in yeah. direct ways. And if I had it to do again, I'm, I think that I would have done things a little differently. I would have yeah. probably gone out into the workforce first instead of going to college first. Yeah. Um, well, because I went times, to college and didn't do very well. Yeah. And then I, when I went back to college, I was working a full-time job doing college and a full-time job. Um, and my parents had put money away for me for college. So in retrospect, I feel like if I had taken a couple of years and gone out and tried to do some work in some areas that I had some interests yeah. that I might've had a better idea of what I was doing when I went to college in the first place or what I was striving for and probably wouldn't have needed all that time to finish bouncing around from major to major. And you know. Well, and, and on top of that, sometimes if you start off working in a field, Sometimes if you're if the company wants to invest in you, mm -hmm. they'll pay for your college. Yeah, that's true too. Um, I know there's plenty of fields that that do that just that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's something else to consider. So, um, so we've got I don't know five or ten minutes left here, roughly. Yeah. Uh, we may as well hit the news of a couple of days ago, and talk about <laughs> the um, the Democrat VP Kamala. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'll tell you. Okay, so honestly, when I first heard this, I thought that's a disaster. That's that's yeah. Oh, I I it, 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 I I literally laughed out loud when I saw it come across <laughs> my feed. I was like, oh my god, I cannot believe this. Like of all the people, um, but yeah, I mean, the more I've thought about it, it doesn't change my assessment that it's a disaster. <laughs> I, I, I still think it's a disaster, but um, yeah. I thought initially that they just didn't understand uh, their base. Yeah. Um, and that may be true, but I've, I've reassessed and I think that there was a real, that there was real purpose in this and it wasn't just a complete miscalculation. Yeah. I think that they are actually aiming for, um, the, uh, Democrat middle-aged female voter. Yeah. Um, I think that that's what they're after. And, yeah. uh, 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 Kamala Harris is a reasonable choice if you think that they're not paying a whole lot of attention. And we're back again. Yeah. Um, Technical difficulties and whatnot. Yeah, it was a miscalculation. We actually changed batteries in the middle of the last episode. Uh, Not all but of only, them. only one of them. We should have changed all of them. Yeah, well, <laughs> live and learn, I guess. <laughs> Next time it dies, we'll change, we'll change them all. Please change yeah. them all. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, I think that, they, um, that it was deliberate yeah. uh, choosing her. I think that they're aiming for the... Um, Middle-aged female Democrat voter, primarily white. Yeah. Um, and that the the tough-nosed um, prosecutor is actually like a good a good pick in at least from their perspective in that regard. As far as trying to get that group. Yeah. Um, now uh, that being said, she's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, Tulsi took her down. Oh yeah. Very easily. Yeah. Um, but she, uh, yeah, I, I think this, I think this probably will backfire on them. Um, and I think it shows a complete disregard for the black voter. Yeah. Uh, and actually this is a real example of them taking the black voter for granted. I think, yeah. um, that to me, it seems like what they're saying is we're so confident that we're going to get the black vote that we can put up a candidate that is essentially anathema to everything that that the BLM movement is about and still get your votes and win. Yeah. 
And that's, that's a dangerous calculation on their part because I, yeah. at the end of the day, I think those people just won't go out and vote. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it won't, they're not going to vote for Trump. It's not like they're going to flip to Trump, although some could. Mm-hmm. But I think overall, though, just not getting the turnout in those communities could be enough. Yeah. At least in a lot of them. Yeah. And, and people, people know what she's done. Like, I mean, they will by the time this campaign's over. Because if you think Trump's going to ignore it, you got <laughs> something else coming. Like, when, if he sees a weakness, he's going to exploit it. You can guarantee that. And like I say, that clip of Tulsi has been tossed around so much. Like mm-hmm. people are seeing it. Like, I mean, it's out there. Yeah. So. Well, and it, it's easy enough to, to find um, more information. And I, I can't remember all the specifics. And we'll probably go into this in more detail when it comes closer to election time. But yeah. um, she uh, she jailed thousands of people in California for um, nonviolent drug offenses. Yeah. Um you know, and as Tulsi said, while well, laughing about having smoked pot, <laughs> exactly. um, she, um, she was jailing parents of truant children. Well, see, I yeah. didn't know about that. Um, and then there's the, uh, the death row things, um, yeah. the withholding evidence that Tulsi talked about it. And yeah. I don't know if it was the same case or a different case. Um, but there's a, another one where somebody presented exculpatory evidence on a, in a murder case yeah. and she kept him in jail on a, um, on a trial technicality or, uh, or bureaucratic technicality. Like they didn't file paperwork in time for to represent themselves or something like oh, that. Wow. I can't yeah. remember the specifics of it, but, um, there's, there is, there's so many stories of like this yeah. out there. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's, it'll end up out there in front of everybody yeah. before it's all said and done. And, and the black lives matter community will, they, I don't see them embracing and looking past this. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't see it being overlooked. I mean, this is what they've based part of their movement on at this point is just what she represents. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Um, and just as a side note uh, that I think is funny is that when she was sworn in as a senator, um, she was uh, touted as the first Indian American senator because <laughs> right. um, her mother's India Indian. Indian, yeah. yeah. So not American Indian. <laughs> yeah, not not like Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's just kind of whatever race is most politically <laughs> whatever's convenient at the time. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I think that. Well, I mean, from what I've been seeing, and I, I'm. You know, YouTube tries to find where you are and give you exactly that. So it, yeah. it can be um, to see a little biased, but uh, black people don't like her. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they know the stuff that we're that we talked about. Mm-hmm. I mean, they know her as a prosecutor. Like, I mean, yeah. that's that's going to be a problem for their campaign. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just I don't see any way around it. And maybe he can overcome it. I mean, he's got such. The media would have you believe he's so far ahead of Trump anyway that it doesn't matter. Yeah. But um, I think well, this that, isn't going to help. I, yeah. Well, and see, I was interested in kind of seeing what the um, what the mainstream media thought of this pick and stuff. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's all been just like she's amazing and blah blah blah, such a good pick and the whole thing. Yeah. And like what I see on social media is just them massacring this pick like yeah and and that nobody is is really happy with it but mm. once again i mean i'm kind of in my own little echo chamber there so i mean it is what it is but it definitely i just don't see this working out well for them at least in their favor yeah so yeah i agree um i don't uh and you know like the the kind of funny but in a in a dark dark way yeah. um is the of course, the problem that um, Joe Biden brought up by saying he was going to pick a woman of color. Yeah. Um, so now you look at uh, it like now it's, the way it's, to it's do a, this. It's graded on the curve. Like, yeah. The, yeah. The, the way she's you do not this. Necessarily the best pick, but she's the best woman pick. Yeah, of color. Of color. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. The so. the best non-white woman I could find. Yeah, that's exactly. that's essentially what it says is his VP candidate, and that's not. Yeah. I mean, the way you do this, obviously, is that you decide that you're going to pick a woman of color, but you don't announce it. Yeah, right. (laughs) You just pick her, and then you play it off like, this is the best one I can find. Yeah, yeah. She was the best there was, period. Not the best there was under these... The best VP candidate. Yeah, Yeah. under these circumstances. It's the worst kind of... 
yeah. what, what do we call this? Uh, identity politics. It's oh, just, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, anyway. Here so, we are. <laughs> yeah. 2020. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A uh, year to remember. For sure. Uh, Whether we want to or not. <laughs> yep. Um, it's a shame you guys missed the previous discussion. <laughs> the, yeah. the part, the the five minutes that we talked about her that, that we yeah. lost. Well... What you gonna do? Yeah. Next time, we, put good batteries in it. That's yeah, all I can I say. Oh, Hashtag good batteries. <laughs> they are good batteries. <laughs> very not, good batteries. That's not good enough. Yeah. Ultimate lithium batteries in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> They're lasting a lot longer than the stuff that we were using before. Oh, that's true. Um. So, well, uh, I don't know. We just need better equipment, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's time to upgrade. <laughs> this is such a nice little device, though. I love this thing. Yeah. Oh, well. And I've learned how to use it so well. <laughs> well yeah, yeah. Hey, that helps. Knowing yeah. how to use stuff is important. <laughs> yes. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Gary hasn't learned how to use anything in here, by the way. <laughs> hey, I watch you do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Could you do it? Probably not. All right. <laughs> not, I, I could no, do it nowhere as efficiently as you can. Oh, you do. very well yeah. done. Okay. <laughs> like, you, okay. You do it so well <laughs> that I wouldn't even dream of in, encouraging getting on. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't even, even want to try. Yeah. Wouldn't even, I wouldn't even want to give it a try. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, so. on on that ego feed, <laughs> um, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Um, that's, that's all we got for now. All right. So, uh, as always, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes and or Podbean, uh, like and share. Um, yeah, comments, I can't. Um, we, we won't add that tip of cl- clip of Tulsi on this episode, but I will put it in the comments on Facebook for anybody that's kind of missed it. Okay, yeah, um, good idea. That way, it'll be there. Just if if you have not seen this clip, you need to see it. And yeah, it, that's where it will be. It will be um, on Facebook where when we put, post the podcast. So on the Liberty Mike page or on your page, Liberty Mike page. Okay. I'll I'll just I'll um I'll put it in the comments section when we post up the thing. That way, it's there because. Because, like I say, definitely worth seeing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure most people that listen to this podcast have probably seen it, but maybe not. Mm-hmm. And if you yeah, haven't. if you're listening to this pro- podcast, you're probably somewhat engaged in politics and <laughs> yeah, right. may have seen that. <laughs> um, all right, and uh, in then let's see, follow, comment, like, share, uh, reviews. I don't know all, all that other stuff. Yeah. Um, all all engagement helps. So absolutely. And, uh, of course, you can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. And we plan to be back here in a week. Absolutely. Uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.